good morning everyone so let's briefly recap so so far we have uh, talk about the sales period So the whole uh, sales medium SCM 605 we did. We talked about, we did different uh, permutations and combinations. We did different kind of uh, processes. And that is what we have done in case of HP LD. We did a lot of configuration also. Now we want to talk, and we also did pricing. In the pricing, also, we spent a lot of time talking about pricing and we also did configuration and the pricing in which we configured a lot of entire condition technique we configured so those are the two PDF we have done so far now we want to go to next PDF. We want to go to next PDF. So the next PDF is for CRM. So CR100 and CRM, customizing fundamentals. So that is what we want to talk. And that is what we want to discuss. Customizing fundamentals. NCR. So that is what we're going to learn. The next topic, which is here. So we'll, uh, again, as we have done before, we go topic by topic, area by area, and uh, we'll go through, you know, different units. So each of these different units, we will talk and we will discuss. And that is our exercise. So these are the unit one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven. So all those different uh, units as we have done before. So here we're going to talk about an overview of CRM seven point four. Overview of CRM seven point zero is what we will discuss. 
and what is CRM 7.0 and different functions which we can do in CRM 7.0. So we're going to talk about CRM functions and CRM architecture, corrective six, and the plan to user interface, login, and personalization. Okay. So we're going to talk about NCP CRM functions and architecture. I hope uh, my screen is um, uh, visible to everyone. Um, Okay, CRM functions and architecture. From the function perspective, from the process perspective, CRM has only three processes. We see this figure one. So here from the process perspective, you will see sales, service, and marketing. So in SAP CRM or any CRM for that matter, anywhere in the world, <laughs> you only have three processes, sales process, service process, and the marketing process. Those are the only three processes you have in SAP CRM or any CRM for that matter. So in uh, CRM, you will not see finance or production or inventory or quality and you know all those different functions they do not exist in the sap crm or any crm so crm only will have sales service and marketing and then we can have an nld which basically means you can have a reporting so those are the only processes which you can have in uh, SAP CRM. I would like you guys to make a note of this uh, two and a half lines which I highlighted. So please make a note of those lines, please. Okay. Make a note of these two and a half lines, please. So SAP CRM is a solution for managing customer. So SAP CRM only have a process which is related to customer only. Which is related to customer only. So it includes marketing, sales, and service process. These are the only three processes you will see in SAP. SAP CRM is a part of SAP Business Suite. So we have SAP Business Suite, and using SAP Business Suite, we can have CRM as a part of a business suite. So we can integrate with SAP BI. We can integrate with SAP SCM, Supply Chain Management, which is means APO. We can integrate with SAP uh, NetViewer Portal. Not many people use this NetViewer Portal anymore <coughs> earlier. This NetViewer portal was used, uh, you know, quite a lot in all different uh, functions and modules. Uh, it was being used before, and then SAP CRM was also used with the field applications. And um, SAP CRM was also can be integrated with a we call it CRM web channel. And SAP CRM can also be inter, uh, integrated with the interaction center or the call center. So this is an architecture of SAP CRM. So SAP CRM integrated with the ERP, integrated with the BI, 
integrated with SCM, which is supply chain management, integrating with SCB Net Fever portal, integrating with the field applications, integrating with the back channel, integrating with the call center. So these are the various other products which SAP CRM can integrate. Now, if you see here in this arrow, these are bi-directional. You see these arrows, most of them are bi-directional. So that basically means you can send the data from CRM to ERP or ERP to CRM. So the flow of the data is bi-directional. So this is the architecture of SAP CRM. I would like you guys to make a note of the one, two, three. Make a note of these three line items. Make a note of these three line items. Okay. Make a note of these three line items. So SAP CRM is a central CRM server with its application components. So when we're talking about SAP CRM, SAP CRM is not a separate module like SD module or MM module or FI module or PP module. SAP CRM is a server by itself. So it's a server by itself. It use ERP as a backend. So we learn SD. So when we learn SD, you're talking about ERP as a backend. We are talking about ERP as a backend system. Okay. So with this is SAP CRM. And in the SAP CRM, we can have a CRM enterprise. SAP CRM also has something called middleware. Middleware is being used for the integrating to the backend system. Then it also has something called adapters. So here we can have R3 adapter. We can have a BW adapter. R3 adapter is allowing you to integrate with R3. BW adapter is allowing you to integrate with VW. So adapter is a bunch of programs which allow you to integrate CRM with other systems. That is where we can have different uh, CRM systems. And then we can integrate. We have a middleware in SAP CRM. I would like you guys to make a note of these one and a half lines if you see here on the screen. Make a note of these. Uh, CRM middleware is a primary device for data exchange between CRM and other systems. So when we talk about from the CRM, we can send the data to ERP and ERP to CRM. That data transfer from CRM to other applications happens using something called middleware. We will talk about middleware. We have a subject. We have a topic on the middleware. So we will talk about middleware. Okay. We'll talk about middleware and how the middleware works. But this is architecture. We need to understand how this architecture works. So this CRM, CRM enterprise, that basically means uh, CRM has only three functions, sales, service, and marketing. It has a different adopters. These adopters allow you to integrate SAP with other system. 
and uh, you have adapter for R3 adapter for BW adapter for SCM adapter for other things. So using those adapters, you can integrate SAP CRM to other applications as we expect them to integrate. So we can do integration within SAP. Okay, and then we have a, so that is the CRM middleware. We have a topic on CRM middleware, we'll talk about that. Okay. So understand between ERP and CRM. ERP means Enterprise Resource Planning. ERP has a different modules. In that uh, ERP have a, you know, FI or SD or MM and PP and QM and gazillions of all those different modules which we have in SAP. They are part of SAP ERP, CRM is a completely different product. And in CRM, you have only customer facing processes. It does not have anything else except customer facing processes. So when I say customer facing processes, it basically means it has a process like, uh, <coughs> like sales, like service, and the marketing. So those are the three processes and three category of processes which are which are there in SAP CRM. Include marketing, sales, and service. Only those three category of processes. Okay. Now we go to the next topic, and that next topic talks about SAP CRM web client user interface. I would like you guys to make a note of that term, which you see at your screen. It's called SAP CRM web client user interface. SAP CRM web client user interface. Mm -hmm. So make a note of that. Web client user interface. Okay. Web client user interface. So CRM web client user interface. So SAP CRM has some additional functionality as well. Okay. 
let us talk about what is a SAP CRM web client user interface is. I would like you guys to make a note of one, two, three, four, five. Make a note of these five line items which you see at your screen. Make a note of these five line items. So make a note of these five line items. Which I highlighted. And then I will explain what do they actually mean. Okay. So, CRM web client user interface is a separate user interface. Now this user interface is only meant for business users. Web client user interface. Now in SAP, ECC, when we are doing all these exercises and all these different things, so we have primarily working with SAP GUI, or SAP graphical user interface, but in SAP CRM, SAP GUI of course is there. The same GUI which we are using uh, so far in SD, the same uh, GUI applies. So now we have a something called web client user interface. So web client user interface deliver a harmonized online user interface. The keyword here is user. Web client is designed for the business user and presents a role-based role-based workspace role-based. The keyword here is role based. Role based.
so you can define different roles sales role sales manager sales supervisor marketing manager service manager customer service representative and all for these different roles you can define what does this role can do and what does this role can do crm work user interface which replaced the existing gui and the people said there used to be of course sap gui which we going to use but before that we are learning crm 7.0 but before 7.0 there used to be something called people centric user interface also so that people centric user interface is gone that is no more applicable i would like you guys to make a note of this crm web cloud user interface is based upon business server pages technology business server pages technology make a note of that bsp business server technology is a programming language so when you talk about the web client user interface it is not written in abap so it is not abap it is not written in abap okay. it is written in something called business server pages or bsp business server pages and why it is written in business server pages pages because using business server pages uh, business server pages it is web, web enabled it is not written in uh, bsp okay so there is where the bsp come into the picture this is just a screen layout how the web client user interface look like if you can read it this is a lot of these different functions uh, where we can uh, define uh, different functions how we can uh, you know different uh, functions we can do so crm web client user interface you can also do personalization in it uh, which basically means uh, you want to add your own personal data user information password time zone date zone decimal time format and those kind of personalized color schema uh, so those kind of uh, things you can do in this is called personalization now the role of sap graphical user interface so important thing is when we talk about web client user interface web client user interface is primarily only for business users is only for business users when we talk about sap gui which we have been using so far so sap gui will be used for these things so sap gui will be used for all administrative activities for example it will be used for customizing it will be used for administration it will be used for abap workbench workbench basically means writing an abap program 
so that a workbench will be used for business workflow will be used for the user maintenance creating the user id passwords and all that for system performance monitoring for crm middleware integration so for all these different functions we will still use sap gui customizing system admin workbench workflow administration monitoring middleware for all these different functions for all these different activities we will still use sap gui what is customizing well customizing is parameterization we already use customizing we already did customization where we configured condition type access sequence order type item category all those different configuration which we did is all customizing similarly you can do customizing in crm also so the way you can do customization same transaction code spro we use that transaction code spro and that transaction code spro is being used for the purpose of defining so we can use customizing in the same transaction code spro same possibility in sap ci we going to do that okay this is a customization now log in into sap gui so how do we do that so first and foremost look at my screen so this is sap gui this is hcp gui now in hcp gui I would like you guys to log in and go to SCP GUI, which you will see at your screen. Okay. I would like you guys to new and then you go to next and this is screen will come
and this is what you have to enter in the description you can type whatever crm this that application server should be exactly what you see which is 192.168.30.6 and instance number should be 00 So I would like you guys to make a note. And then when you double click on it, then obviously to open the same screen where it will ask for ID and password. It is exactly the same way you are logging to SAP SD. You will need different ID and password. You will need different ID and password. You cannot use your SD ID and password. SAP SD ID is for SAP SD only. For CRM, you'll use various CRM activities. This is SAP CRM. This is SAP CRM. Okay. And you will need different ID and password. So when you go to SAP CRM, so you are now looking at the SAP CRM. And here, you can have a user menu. And this is SAP menu. SAP menu. And your user menu, and you have to be on the user menu. Now, here we have all these different functions master data, where you can create an organization model, business partner, product. You can do your marketing, sales, service. So these are different functions which we can have in SAP CRM. Which you can enter in SAP CRM. Okay. And that is what you can do. Now, the next topic we want to talk about account management. Second topic. In this, we're going to talk about what is account management, what is the business partners, how do we maintain account, customization, classification, exchange of data. So these are different uh, topics which we're going to understand. We're going to do exercise also. Overview of accounts and business partners. So we're going to talk about overview of accounts and business partners. Business partners. In SAP, we can maintain different type of business partners. So different type of business partners 
we can maintain in SAPCR. That is possible. Now, if you see here in the screen, you have account, contact, and employee. You have individual account, corporate account, group account. Let us understand this. Let us understand this. Let us understand this. So, first and foremost, in the account, you can have a three category of account. You have individual account, corporate account, group account. Individual account basically means, you know, you're selling to individual, you're selling to Michael, you're selling to Thomas, you know, B2C. Corporate customer or corporate account basically means when you're selling to corporate, I'm selling it to Home Depot, I'm selling it to Macy's, I'm selling to Costco, I'm selling to Pepsi, I'm selling to Johnson Johnson, that is corporate accounts. And then we can have a group account. Then we can have group account. In the group account, we can define different type of groups. Different type of group. Now, group account basically means when you're selling it to a group of people. For example, you're selling house mortgage to husband and wife. So that is an example of a group account. So in SAP, you can have all these different elements. You can have individual account. You can have a corporate account. You can have a group account. So individual account, corporate account, and the group account. Make a note of all the three. Individual account, corporate account, and the group account. Voice not able to hear. So individual account, corporate account, and the group account. Can you guys hear my voice? It's coming to you. Okay. Then uh, along with account, you can have a contact. And also you can have employees. So we can have contact and we can have employees. Now what is the contact? So if, if let us say I have a corporate account, Costco or Johnson or Johnson, so my corporate account is Johnson Johnson. In Johnson Johnson, who is my contact? Who is my contact? So there is the contact account. And who is the employee? Who is the employee? And that employee is our employee which is used for carrying out functions. So my sales manager is my sales employee. So this is a, some of the concepts of uh, business partners, which you can have 
చెప్పి నేను చెప్పి Okay. So, what is the business partner? So, business partner is an account. Is a customer. My sold to party is my business partner. Ship to party is my business partner. Peer is my business partner. My vendor is a business partner. So, business partner is a very broad concept. So, anybody who is part of my business is my business partner and in the account you can have a corporate account you can have an individual account and you can have a group account. you can have a contact contact means an account who is your contact so when i go to johnson johnson i talk to michael so michael is my contact in johnson johnson when i go to costco my contact is thomas when i go to my account messes my contact is nancy an employee is the employee of a company your company i would like you guys to make a note of this paragraph during business partner creation the number assignment is determined by the grouping so make a note of that grouping so grouping is an account grouping is an account so grouping is a field so where we are so if i go back to here if i go to master data if i go to business partner if i go to maintain business partner if i go to so these are three category of business partner person organization group so let us say i go to person organization okay now here i have a group these are some of the group you can create your own also here in the grouping of 001 internal number assignment so that is what we are seeing here the grouping during business partner creation the number assignment whether it's going to be internal number external number what kind of number range it is going to be that is controlled by grouping and this is the field which is called grouping i would like you guys to make a note of this line which i make a note here make a note of this line as well So make a note of that line, please. Okay. Make a note of this line. okay so make a note of that so we have uh, you can have internal number assignment 
you can have external number assignment so that you can have in SAP. I would like you guys to make a note of this paragraph, which I highlighted. This is the menu path in the configuration where the number we're going to go there. We're going to see that in configuration as well. Okay. Note of that as well. So this is the menu path where uh, number edges and grouping is defined. We're gonna go there. Okay. So now is a good breaking point. And um, we're gonna take a 10 minutes break and we'll talk in 10 minutes. Let's continue. So business partner. In SAP CRM, there is a concept of business partner. This concept of business partner is used very broadly, very widely, and there could be different kind of business partners. You have a sold to party is a business partner. A ship to party is a business partner. Payer is a business partner. You have a patient is a business partner. You are a bank, a borrower is a business partner. If you are a real estate, your tenant could be a business partner. Your customer is a business partner. If you are a bank, your debtor is a business partner. Your employee is a business partner. Your contact person is a business partner. Your supplier is a business partner. So you can have a business partners of different types and different categories. So we can do business partners you can have organized unit business partners so you can have different type of business partners in sap I would like you guys to make a note of one, two, three, four, four lines. Make a note of these four lines, which I highlighted. Take a pen and paper. Business partner.
okay let's understand this concept so here what we are saying is there is something called business partner role so in sap crm is a concept of business partner role now where is business partner role so if we see here there is a business partner role and if you go to drop down you can have a different business partners and they are classified by the role business partner role describe what kind of role what kind of a business role this business partner plays sole to party is role ship to party is role bill to party is a role payer is a role vendor is a role so business partner role describes what kind of role that business partner plays business partner role make a note of this concept as well one and a half lines business partner model in sap crm differs from that of erp backend system customer master so the business partner model which we have in crm that model is quite different than the customer master model which we have in backend erp in backend erp we created a customer master we created a business partner all those different functions we created okay there are two different functions we're going to talk about it these are the business partner categories person organization and group person organization and group i would like you guys to make a note of this called business partner categories so we talk about business partner role and now we are talking about business partner categories so please make a note of that something called business partner category business partner category describe what category of business partner it is
that is called business partner category. All business partners in SAP CRM is divided into three categories. Person, organization, and the group. We divide it into these three categories. Divide it into these three categories. Business partner category. All business partners are divided into three categories only. Person, organization, and the group. Now we see here, we have these three categories. Person, organization, and the group. These are the three categories. And these are the only three categories. And all business partners are divided into these three categories only. There's no other category. These are the three primary categories. All business partners are divided into these three categories only. That is what you see, person, organization group person organization group additional categories cannot be defined make a note of that statement so these three categories are there in the system and only these three categories can be there in the system you cannot define any additional category You cannot define any additional category that is not possible to define. You cannot define any additional category. Whatever categories are there, those categories are predefined. You can define business partner. That is possible. The business partners you can define. That is possible. But you cannot, business partner role you can define. Grouping you can define. But business partner categories you cannot define. Business partner categories are predefined. Make a note of this statement also. Business partner category cannot be changed after business partner has been created. So every business partner belongs to a category. And once this category has been defined, that category cannot be changed. That category of the business partner cannot be changed. So whatever business partner category you have, that category you have. You cannot define a business partner categories. And once you create a business partner, you create a business partner for a category, you assign a business partner to a category, 
it can only be assigned to one category and once a business partner has been assigned to a category that category cannot be changed so once you define to a category that category cannot be changed that category will remain as it is there is also a concept so business partner role we talked about so sole to party ship to party bill to party payer supplier vendor competitor you can define different kind of role so you cannot configure category but business partner role you can configure you can define as many as roles you want standard sap have different roles so we see here you have all these different roles and you can create your own so a lot of these z's which you see here these are configured we're going to create our own role also so we're going to configure a new business partner role as well and that is part of our exercise so we're going to create a business partner role as well that is our exercise this is the menu path where you define business partner role so make a note of them this is the menu path where you can define your business partner role and we are create this business partner role we can create a new role this is the menu part for defining the role we're going to create there is also a concept in sap crm that is called business partner relationship now all these different uh, concept which you are talking about business partner role grouping business partner category and business partner relationship which you see on your screen right now none of those concepts are available in sap sd in sap sd also we create a customer master we get sold to party and all that but that concept of business partner does not exist there this concept of business partner business partner role business partner category grouping now we are talking about business partner relationship this concept only exists in sap crm not in sd so now here we have something called business partner relationship in the business partner relationship this is a uh, rmj inc one company there is another company this is my business partner this is my business partner okay. this business partner and what is the relationship between these two business partner rmj inc and bismuth and partner so between this period to this period rmj inc is a stakeholder of 80% so this company hold 80% stake in this company that is a business partner relationship between the two company this is a business partner relationship between the two company i would like you guys to make a note 
or one, two, three, four lines. Make a note of these four lines also which I highlighted here. We're gonna do this exercise as well. We're gonna do all these exercises. Make a note of these blood points, please. So business partner relationship is a concept in SAP CRM. There is no such concept exists in SAP SD. Business partner relationship, define a business relationship between the two partners. So between the two partners, we can have a business partner relationship. That relationship has a start date and end date. You can define what date to what date. This is an example of a business partner relationship. We're going to do this exercise as well. This is one organization. This is Home Depot. This is Johnson & Johnson. And this organization has a contact person called Michael. So between Johnson Johnson and the Michael, there's a relationship of a contact person. So Johnson Johnson has Thomas is a contact person. Thomas is a contact person for this organization. So between the two organizations, we can have this relationship. In the relationship, we can have a relationship attributes. These are the different relationship attributes. You can define what function, what department that person works on, communication data, what is his phone number, his fax number. We're going to define all this. We're going to do this exercise as well. What is his power? Is he a purchaser? Is he authority to sign a doc check? All that you can define the different attributes of the relationship. We're going to do this exercise as well. Integration of ad business address services. Business address services. Make a note of that term called business address services. BAS. Business address services. Now, this is uh, an interesting feature. 
this capability called business address services provide you certain capabilities in SAP. What does it provide? Any number of addresses for business partners. Look at the first one. Any number of addresses for each business partner. You cannot do that in SD. In SD, it is not possible to have a more than one address. You can only have one address per customer. That is called business partner address. Business partner address. So what this this functionality allows you is to do is to allow to have a multiple addresses for one partner. One any number of addresses for each business partner. So one business partner can have multiple addresses. That is not possible. That you cannot do in SAP SD. In SAP SD, you can only have one address per business partner. This is the additional feature. You can define usage. So if you have a multiple addresses, then what does each address do? You can define usage also. If you have address one, address two, address three, what address one do, what address two do, what address three do. So each address can have a separate function. That also we can define business partner address. And what does the business partner address do for us? This is address determination. If you want, you guys can make a note of this also, which is called SAP customizing, cross application, business partner, basic setting, address determination. So make a note of this menu path also where the business partner address can be defined. So this address determination, this is the configuration. You can also define the templates. You can also define the templates. Templates basically mean it allows you to maintain the data. So if you want, um, you can make a note of this line I told. Templates can be used to maintain the sales area data. So you can create a template, and from the template, you can copy the data. Okay. So we can define templates. There is also a concept called buying center. Buying center. Make a note of this term called buying center. Now, buying center is a very uh, interesting feature. Now, what does the buying center do? Many times when we are selling a product, so let's say I'm selling a CRM to Johnson Johnson. 
So when I'm selling a CRM to Johnson Johnson, who we are selling it to? When it's selling CRM to Johnson Johnson, what does this basically mean? So there might be multiple people involved. They may be sales manager, they may be sales vice president, they may be purchase order, they may be CIO, they may be IT director. All of those people involved with each authority, role, responsibilities, influences, and all these different business partners involved together to doing a buying decision. In SAP, we can define that as a buying center. Then there is something called account fact sheet. So make a note of that, something called account fact sheet. Account fact sheet. So make a note of that, something called account fact sheet. So account fact sheet basically gives them a view. Make a note of these lines which is there in account fact sheet. Okay. Make a note of that, account fact sheet. Account fact sheet. And we'll understand what do you mean by account fact sheet. Account fact sheet. Account fact sheet is nothing but a report which allows you to have a consolidated view of an account. That is called account fact sheet. Okay, so we're gonna do some exercise. So let's do some exercises. So I want to do business partner exercise, or we call it BP. Now in a business partner exercise, I want to create a sold to party business partner. I want to create contact person business partner. Make a note of all these steps. I want to create an employee responsible business partner. I want to link sold to party to contact person business partner. using relationship functionality. Link sold to party to employee responsible business partner using relationship functionality. Make a note of all these steps. Make a note of these instructions. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So now I want to go to So now when we're getting a business partner, this is the menu part. This is a menu, master data, business partner, maintain business partner. Make a note of this menu part. This is the menu part. Okay, we go to maintain business partner. Then I select organization. I select grouping, internal number assignment. And then I select sold to party. So I select business partner is a sold to party. And then I can write down so we can have a new customer. My customer is Costco. In search term, you can write whatever we want. We put the street. So streets, you can put whatever, plain field avenue, one, two, three, four, postal code, city, country, and uh, zip code. This is a regular address. You can put identification pertaining to customer, what industry and all that, the control data, tax classification, which country, what region. So not taxable, what kind of business partner type. So you can define different category of business. Is my retail customer, my wholesale customer, You can define your business transaction, what is the bank key, what is the bank account, control key, classification. In the classification, you can classify what kind of a customer it is. 
It is my customer, it is my prospect, it's my competitor, what kind of a customer it is. And here, if you want to integrate with R3, you can integrate with R3 account group. When you transfer this data to R3, in R3 you have an account group. You have to specify what account group it is. Calling hours. You can define, you know, long text. Any kind of comment you want to type. Then you go to sales area data. This is the sales area data. You can choose the sales organization. You can select the distribution channel. You can choose customer group. What group of customer it is. We can also choose in completion log. We can, and all these different things. Then we go to shipping. In the shipping, we can select in quote term. We can select delivery priority, shipping condition, delivery control. We go to billing tab. Here we can define what is my customer pricing procedure, is standard, any exchange rate, if you wanted to use any exchange rate, what currency we deal in, US dollars, what is my payment terms, if I have any customer group, industrial customer, any kind of price list, and we can save it. And we can save it. So now see the message in the bottom. Business partner four one five seven nine one has been created. We create a business partner, so I create a sold to party. Okay. Now I want to create a contact person business partner. Back. Okay. Again, I go to business partner. I want to create a contact person now. Okay. So when I go to contact person, then I have to choose person. I choose person. So contact person. 
my contact person is Michael. What is street he lives in? He lives in Route 22, 27, 345, contact person, city. He's in Edison, country, region. Okay, hit enter. We can define different addresses, identification, whether that is a male, female, unknown, any kind of uh, identification, control. What kind of business partner it is so we can define um, bp type we can define country region We go to transaction. And then we can save it. So we created a contact person called Michael Jordan. So this is a contact person which we have created. Contact person, business partner, 415-792. Then we can create employee person. So this is sold to party. We create contact person. And then we have employee responsible. So now I want to create another exercise that is called employee responsible.
okay so i want to go and create employee responsible so i go to person again and then what i uh, i want to go to employee And then my employee is Thomas. Street, Route 87, Postal Code. So we can enter contact person and we can save it. So we create a person. And we can note of it. Okay. So these are the functionality. So that is what uh, So we're gonna take a 10 minute break now and we'll talk after 10 minutes. So we're gonna take uh, 10 minutes break and we'll talk after 10 minutes. So now we created a sold to party contact person and uh, we created a employee responsible. These are three partners. So I select. So if I want to go back and verify, you can open a partner. You can verify a partner. So this is the first partner we created. Is it sold to party? We created. Right. Then we create another partner. If I go back and check, I can always go back and check those partners as well. So we want to know 92. We can have contact person. And then we have uh, another customer. It's employed. So back. Now, if I want to go and create a business partner relationship. So how do we create business partner relationship? So let's say I open my business partner.
Okay. उनकी पार्टी ओके नाउ वी गो टू रिलेशनशिप हियर दिस रिलेशनशिप I select uh, employee responsible. Okay, I can enter sales organization. The sales organization this person belong to. What is his partner function? enter okay. and we can save it so that is how the partner relationship so we did these exercises now we go to the next topic account classification options and account okay okay so we have account classification options and accounts there is a concept called marketing attribute marketing attribute basically allows us to divide and classify a customer by different attributes make a note of these three lines Make a note of these two lines: two, three, three and a half. Okay. 
ok ओके okay. ओके okay. So marketing attribute. So if you look at here, characteristic value attributes. These are different. ओके सो हि we can define different attributes now is a very uh, interesting functionality and that is a very uh, functionality which allows you to create define a customer on the basis of different parameters so let's say i can define different attributes application area level of expertise preferred channel newsletter so application area whether i'm going to use this in uh, this product in office in multimedia internet level expertise whether the user is beginner advanced and expert preferred channel whether he uh, use uh, to be called by telephone email fax and text message whether he prefer us to send yes or no so we have marketing attributes you can define these attributes these attribute could be whatever you cannot do this you cannot do this in sap sg okay <clears throat> so here make a note of this paragraph
criteria, attributes, values. You can define it. Sales organization, distribution channel. You can define division, attributes, value, role. So attribute is this role, customer, role, prospect, role, completer. You can define rating. This is just an example. So rating is a gold, is a silver, or is a customer. So you can define different attributes and their values. Just an example. This is another example, account classification. You can define different attributes. We're gonna do this exercise. This is the menu path where you can do the customization, you can do uh, classification, you cannot do that classification. Account life cycle, make a note of one, two, three, three and a half, two and a half lines, okay? Make a note of that. Okay. Okay, account life cycle. So customer has a life cycle. Every customer has a life cycle. Customer identified, then it is my silver customer, is my gold customer, is my platinum customer, and now is my ex customer. So you can have the life cycle You can define the roles. You can also define assignment blocks. Okay. Assignment blocks. Assignment block basically means what kind of a role is assigned And what is what kind of role is blocked? So, for example, if somebody is my ex customer, we cannot provide service. Somebody is my prospect, I cannot create a delivery. So, based upon the role, what kind of a stage that person is, we can define what kind of role this customer can play. Okay. Effect of the account life cycle. 
you go to different stages and consequences, potential, qualified contact, customer is stage one, customer is stage two. There is also a concept called account group or customer hierarchy or account hierarchy. Make a note of that. Okay, make a note of this line icon, account hierarchy. In SAP, and I, we're gonna do this uh, exercise also. Account hierarchy in SAP SD, there's a similar functionality that is called customer hierarchy. Okay. So that is where we can have account hierarchy. So account hierarchy is a hierarchy of different customers. It's a tree structure. If you see here, your business partner, business partner, business partner, business partner, business partner, business partner. Okay. So now, Now let's understand this. So let us say this customer hierarchy of use in many places, especially in the large customers. I will give an example like a Home Depot or a Costco. So now Costco is everywhere. So on the top there is a Costco, national Costco. Then you can have a regional Costco. The north, east, west, south. And within the one zone, you can have a different subzones. In the north, you have a New Jersey, you have a Pennsylvania, you have New York. Within New Jersey, you can have a customer one, customer store two. In Pennsylvania, you can have store one, store two, store three. And there is an example of a customer hierarchy or account hierarchy which you can create. Customer hierarchy and account hierarchy is used in pricing. Okay. And the reporting structure. So you can define pricing and reporting hierarchy on the basis of that. Okay, so now I'm stopping the class and we'll talk tomorrow. We're gonna do some exercises tomorrow and then we're gonna take it from there. So thank you everyone. Thank you for joining the session and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Thank you all, bye.